a few weeks ago, we had a community meeting over there. Uh, she was sobbing, telling me the story about how she was out on her property the week before. She was picking up trash because these cartels leave the trash all over their, uh, their grow sites and it, it blew into her, her property. And she was out there with a the trash bin picking it up and someone fired an AK-47 at her. Oh. We had just a couple weeks ago the windshield of a San Bruno County Sheriff's Department car blown out by someone with an AK-47. So this is the kind of intimidation that we're going through. But in addition to that, it is an ecological disaster. So, uh, and, and by the way, I should define, when I talk about illegal marijuana grows, I'm not talking about a couple of plants in someone's backyard. I'm talking about hundreds of acres with hundreds of thousands of plants. And uh, this is catalyzed, this whole problem is catalyzed by Prop 64 that passed in 1996 that lowered the penalty for illegal cultivation of marijuana from a felony to a misdemeanor. Okay, and that, that's what's fueling the growth of these. So in addition to intimidating people, they're bulldozing hundreds of acres of our desert. Uh, they are tapping into water. We're in the midst of an extreme drought, as everyone knows. We estimate they're stealing over three million gallons of water a day in California. Three million gallons of water a day, at least. In addition to that, they're using banned pesticides like carboferrin. And if you dock how toxic that pesticide is, not only is it illegal here in the United States, it's illegal for a good reason. We've had sheriff's de deputies come down with head to toe rashes just because they handled one of these plants. And what happens to that pesticide is the residue gets washed off the plant and ends up where? In the groundwater. So it's a problem that we're gonna be dealing with that runoff for decades. Uh, and I mean, to add insult to injury, Think about, uh, I, I got a great question uh, at a town hall yesterday. Someone said, well, if Prop 64 passed in 1990, I'm sorry, in, uh, uh, in 2016, why, is it, why are we just now having this problem? And the answer is, it is directly tied to federal policies at the southern border. So when the new administration came in early this year, they did two things that changed the policies of the border. They ended the policy of remain in Mexico that required asylum seekers to wait in their country of origin uh, before, as their, their case was processed before they came into the United States. And they reinstituted the policy of uh, catch and release, which means that if someone's caught illegally on this side of the border, they just cite them and, and then they release them. What that did is it made it much easier to traffic people across our southern border. And in fact, if you talk to uh, even law enforcement in inland counties like us that, that are, are, have some distance from the border, uh, our, uh, the problem of, uh, of uh, like fentanyl seizures, human trafficking seizures, and sexual trafficking uh, seizures, that has increased by about threefold uh, versus last year. So what is happening is these cartels are trafficking people across the border. And if you can't pay, and by the way, everyone has to pay. The, the surest way, the most dangerous part of crossing our southern border right now uh, is not the U.S. side, right? It is the Mexico side, because if you cross that border without the cartel's permission, they will kill you. It happens all the time. It costs about $8,000 to get trafficked across the border, and if you don't have it, the cartels will say, uh, okay, well, let's make a deal. We will get you across the border, but then you can work off your debt to us and they traffic into these sites. These sites, if you look at them from the air, it's really stark, they all look the same. What they do is they take a bulldozer and they bulldoze the desert floor, destroy whatever's habitat's there, and they make a 10 foot high earthen berm all the way around it, this earthen wall with a gate set in it. And when I first saw it, I said to uh, the sheriff deputy that was sitting next to me, I said, oh, is that to keep people out of their, uh, you know, of their grow? And he said, oh no. Congressman, that's to keep the workers in because they are worked like slaves. And if they try and escape, they are shot. Uh, so it's a terrible humanitarian disaster for everybody involved and it has to be stopped. The problem is because it is only a misdemeanor, local law enforcement doesn't have the tools that they used to to stop it. So if they catch someone, even if they can prove that they have fiscal responsibility for the growth site, the fine is $500. And these people are clearing hundreds of thousands of dollars with each crop rotation, so they just pay it, right? Uh, another thing that the, the local law enforcement uh, can't do, they can't uh, do things like uh, destroy the, the, the hothouses. Uh, you'd think that, I mean, sometimes they shut down a growth site, but they have to leave the houses and all the growing equipment and the well equipment, 
And when I asked them, well, why don't you just bulldoze all that stuff? Well, we can't, you know, because that's uh, destruction of property. It's just a misdemeanor. You know, we're not allowed to do that. It'd be like uh, seizing somebody's car for running a stop sign, right? We don't do that. We, we reserve that for more serious crimes, and Prop 64 changed that. So, uh, you know, this is a big problem. So uh, what I have been doing to try and put a stop to this is I've partnered with Congressman Garcia, who represents Palmdale and Lancaster, and they're having a similar problem. And we have been demanding that the DEA get involved and help our local law enforcement shut these growth sites down. Uh, and we've uh, sent a series of letters. We've actually had a lot of success. Uh, we got the DEA to come in and help local law enforcement uh, a couple of months ago affect the largest seizure of illegal, illegally cultivated marijuana in the history of the county of Los Angeles. And I hope a few months from now to be telling you that the DEA helped us do the same thing in San Bernardino County. Because that's what we're, uh, we're pushing them to do and we're demanding that they do. And uh, the other thing that we're doing is that uh, a couple weeks ago I introduced an amendment to an appropriations bill that shifted $25 million to the DEA for the express purpose of helping partner with local uh, law enforcement to shut these growth sites down. And uh, you know, I, as a freshman, I didn't know how much success I was, was going to have with that. It was my first time doing something like that, trying to steer uh, that amount of money. But much to my surprise, I was able to evangelize to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. We got that passed out of rules, and I'm hopeful that that will get approved by the full House when we're back in session later this month. So uh, I think that is the only thing that we're going to do to be, be able to do to, shut, to, to help this problem. Long term, the state of California absolutely must create a new uh, state felony for large-scale cultivation of marijuana. That's what has to happen in the long term. But in the short term, what we have to do to shut these growth sites down is to give our law enforcement professionals the resources that they need to come in with overwhelming force, because we don't want a cartel tempted to go take shots at our guys and put our, our deputies in harm's way. We need overwhelming force. We need to come in, shut a grow site down. We have a pesticide that we can put on the plants that will kill them over the course of about three hours. So we've got to shut them down, put the pesticide on, wait three hours, the plants are dead, and then we can pull out. But we need to do that for every site in the county, and we need to do it at least every three months because that's the commercial growing cycle mm -hmm. of marijuana. And if we can get that done, we take away the commercial incentive for these cartels to continue to operate here. And if we can't do it, then it's going to continue to be a problem. But to give you a sense of the scale, the sheriff estimates that we have over 1,000 illegal growth sites, large-scale illegal growth sites, just in San Bernardino. And we have hundreds and hundreds of more in other places that I represent, like Inyo County. So I'll get off my soapbox about this, but, but this is a serious problem, and, and it's something that I'm committed to help fix.